If you want something new, something different, or something downright crazy, Android's definitely the place to be. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4 eTech, and these are the three home screen launchers with a bit of a twist. Open source nature often creates some interesting results, and home screen launchers come pretty much at the top of this list. Take Arrow Launcher, for example, from some plucky young software company called Microsoft. Who? Hmm, yes, Microsoft officially on Android. If you can't beat them, well, you might as well join them. Now, this simply isn't a ripoff of a Windows phone. Arrow Launcher does kind of look like an Android launcher. I say kind of because the home screens are each locked to a certain function that includes apps, contacts, widgets, and recent. This promotes as much vertical scrolling as it does horizontal scrolling. In some ways though, it doesn't quite make sense, as having all your widgets in one place just feels clunky. Besides that, the Arrow Launcher interestingly adds a bit of functionality to your dock. By swiping up, you can access popular apps and a few settings. But this does fly in the face of the notification tray at the top of the screen, which includes these functions anyway. You're kind of torn between Android stock functionality and the new ones Arrow offers you. It's a very new launcher too, which leads to a few bugs. Widgets don't like being resized, for example, which is a basic of any decent launcher. Maybe Arrow just wants to do away with widgets completely. It's not all bad news though, it's fairly fast and responsive. I like the alphabetized app draw too, and Arrow does try to push you the most popular and most recent apps and data to the front of your screens. I also like the ability to add new context specific screens, such as reminders and notes and the ability to automatically set a new Bing wallpaper every day from the settings is a nice Microsoft touch. Arrow Launcher is something different, and credit must go to Microsoft for not simply trying to port over its design language from Windows phones. Maybe with a few months of tweaking, this will evolve into something really quite tempting to use. Next on the list of interesting launchers is One Launcher for two reasons. The first being just how small and lightweight it is, coming in at a tiny 3.5 megabytes. The second reason being the front end looks somewhat familiar and will provide a comforting security blanket if you're transitioning from that phone that shall not be named. One Launcher doesn't do widgets at all and makes everything a lot bigger, brighter and simpler on screen. Like Arrow Launcher, it does have an alphabetized app drawer and when I first installed the launcher, it did do an impressive job of copying my current Nova Launcher apps and folders and creating a home screen for them. So what we have here is almost a stock iOS launcher, which you might argue is designed for less powerful Android phones targeted towards people who aren't as confident using smartphones. And no doubt you will argue in the comments below. One launcher does come with a few tricks up its sleeve from the options accessed with a long press. You can change your home screen transition style and you can switch your wallpaper back to a live one if you wish. You can also add simple gesture controls to hide apps and show notifications. Given that this is a tiny launcher, you do get a lot, but it does come with some what you might call baggage. Some of the app icons, like the clock and weather app, do have widget properties, but so does this one, and this other icon has appeared from nowhere. Both recommend apps to download, which I don't want to. One launcher also adds by default setting controls to the notifications, which I'd rather not have, although you can turn this off. And if you start to try and customise V1 Launcher with new themes and styles, you'll soon discover that you have to download them all from the Google Play Store. Like I say, it's not perfect, but it's something a little different than maybe for those who prefer a particular kind of fruit. And now for something completely different. When it comes to Light Launch, forget everything you associate with Android, because this is simply a single stack of all your applications. You can scroll down the list to find what you want, which is pretty difficult when the icons are this big. So what you can do is pinch to zoom out and show more icons on screen. Still not enough? Then you can pinch out even further, and further still. You might describe this as the Google Maps of home screens, Absolutely everything all on screen all at once. Bonkers. Now, when I booted up Light Launch for the first time, it didn't seem to put my icons in any sort of order whatsoever. So I haven't a clue where any of them are, but you can long press on them to pick them up and rearrange them if you have the time and the patience. You can also load up Light Launch settings and adjust the scroll orientation, as well as the scroll break, page speed, and flings as well. 
Forget widgets, forget material design, forget most common rules of sensible launcher design. Light launch is wacky and fun, but wholly impractical. I guess I could see this as an app draw within a launcher though, could you? Okay, that wraps up my alternative look at launchers, but for those of you who have stuck around, here's a bonus app for you. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed an app dock appearing in my notification tray throughout this video. This is an app called Launchify, which pretty much does what you've already seen, placing a permanent quick launcher, which you can always access from the notification tray. It claims to be an intelligent app that will recommend the right apps in the right place at the right time. The options do seem to hint at this with the ability to type in your home and work address, and through time it will work out what apps you use, when and where. There's also a couple of override controls too to either hide apps or fix apps onto the dock. Launchify is a clean, simple solution, and because it sits in your notification tray, it will also appear on your lock screen, although you do have to tap the app three times to launch it, which is a bit cumbersome. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to tap that thumbs up button if you like this video, and you can visit both myself and C4E Tech through these social media outlets on screen now. Enjoy the rest of your tech day! <coughs> Man, that's cold.